Section 10 of the National Geographic Magazine, Volume 5. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Phil Schempf. An Undiscovered Island Off the Northern Coast of Alaska, Part 2, by Captain Edward Perry Herendine. Among the many traditions of the Point Barrow Eskimo, the following is not without geographic interest. Since no account is kept by them of the lapse of time, it is impossible to fix a date to any story related by them previous to the life of their father or grandfather. Their simple answer to any question regarding the date of these occurrences is always the same. I draw nee, long ago. Our story is this. An Eskimo was out on a whale hunt with his Umiak and crew in April or May. Venturing much further than their companions, and being encompassed by ice, they were carried away to the north and east by the moving pack, until at last they came in sight of a strange land. After many hardships and the death of most of the crew, some at last reached the mainland, their own beloved Nuna, greatly exhausted, and related their adventures to wondering listeners. They told of times when starvation grimly threatened, and when the timely catching of a seal or killing of a bear saved them from a dreadful fate, and the skins furnished material to repair their worn garments. These tales, by whomever related, seemed to bear testimony to one point, viz. of land somewhere to the north and east of Point Barrow, which has been seen by some of these people under such circumstances of hardship, distress, and loss of life as to have fixed the event in their minds, and been related by father to son for perhaps many generations. It is often told that natives wintering between Harrison and Camden Bays have seen land to the north in the bright clear days of spring. In the winter of 1886-87, Uzharlu, an enterprising Eskimo of Utkivi was very anxious for me to get some captain to take him the following summer with his family in canoe and outfit to the northeast as far as the ship went, and then he would try to find this mysterious land of which he had heard so much. But no one cared to bother with this venturesome Eskimo explorer. So confident was this man of the truth of these reports, that he was eager to sail away into the unknown like another Columbus in search of an Eskimo paradise. In the winter of 1887, several of the most intelligent of the Cape Smythe Eskimo came to me about dusk of the evening of February 15th, and reported that three strange men had come up from the southwest along the shore ice, and appeared very weary, but on coming opposite the village, which could not have been seen by the travelers before, they quickened their pace, turned abruptly offshore, and disappeared in the ice pack. It was just as the sun was setting, and the strangers could be seen distinctly, but not until they had gotten into the rough ice did it occur to these people standing on the bank that these three wanderers were strangers indeed, and the more they talked the matter over, the more wonderful it seemed that any tired hunter should pass their village without stopping for rest and refreshment. It was evident that they turned away in fear when they saw the village and the people standing on the bank. Who could these men be who turned away from their hospitable village, where food and a warm welcome awaited them? They reasoned that every man on the coast, from Point Hope to Point Barrow, was known to all the others, and knew he would be welcome to food and shelter. The more they talked, the stranger it seemed until the conclusion was reached that these were Inu Tumuktua, lost people and of course their home must be the mysterious land of their father's tradition. As a proof of this, they said these three men wore white clothing, which was most likely made of white bearskins, while the Eskimos of the coast wear brown clothing made of reindeer skins. Another point in favor of their assertion was that these men had no guns, which fact was noted before they turned off shore into the pack. They had spears and a coil of seal line, and used the spears as walking sticks as they plodded wearily along. The circumstance was most strange, 
every man in the village of utkivi gave an account of himself that evening and i took the trouble to send to point barrow the next morning but none of them had been in that vicinity or were able to throw any light on the subject from my knowledge of the eskimo i am sure no one acquainted would have passed a village without stopping it was near night yet these men in evident alarm turned off shore into the ice pack and were never seen again i made arrangements to go out in the morning and trace these men and solve the mystery but the morning dawned with a fierce blizzard causing the abandonment of the search and left us wondering whence they came and whither they went the only report of land having been seen by civilized man in this vicinity was made by captain john keenan of troy new york in the seventies he was at that time in command of the whaling bark stambul of new bedford captain keenan said that after taking several whales the weather became thick and he stood to the north under easy sail and was busily engaged in trying out and stowing down the oil taken when the fog cleared off land was distinctly seen to the north by him and all the men of his crew but as he was not on a voyage of discovery and there were no whales in sight he was obliged to give the order to keep away to the south in search of them the success of his voyage depended on keeping among whales this fact was often discussed among the whalemen on the return of the fleet to san francisco in the fall the position of captain keenan's ship at the time land was seen has passed from my mind except that it was between harrison and camden bays a letter addressed to captain keenan by the writer in february asking for more definite information as to date and position of his ship and other points of interest failed to reach him and was returned End of section 10.